Hello. I'm back. I'm here for you, all right. You're doing so well. I'm here for you. I have your candle. Lilac. I'll light this for you all right. All right, my dear, let's read. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Song of Myself I celebrate myself and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease observing a spear of summer grass. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no taste of the distillation. It is odorless. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath. Echoes, ripples, and buzzes, whispers. Love root, silk thread, crotch and vine. My respiration and inspiration. The beating of my heart. The passing of blood and air through my lungs the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves and of the shore and dark colored sea rocks and of hay in the barn, the sound of the belched words of my voice, words loosed to the eddies of the wind. A few light kisses, a few embraces, a reaching around of arms, the play of shine and shade on the trees, as the supple boughs wag, the delight alone or in the rush of the streets or along the fields and the hillsides, the feeling of health, the full noon trill, the song of me rising from bed in meeting the sun. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things at second or third hand, nor look through the eyes of the dead, nor feed on the specters in books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. But I do not talk of the beginning or the end. There was never any more inception than there is now, nor any more youth or age than there is now and will never be any more perfection than there is now, nor any more heaven or hell than there is now. Urge and urge and urge, always the procreant urge of the world, out of the dimness opposite, equals advance, always substance and increase, always a knit of identity, always distinction, always a breed of life, to elaborate is no avail. Learned and unlearned, 
feel that it is so. Sure as the most certain sure, plumb in the uprights, well entreated, braced in the beams, I and this misery here we stand. Clear and sweet is my soul, and clear and sweet is all that is not my soul. Lack one lacks both, and the unseen is proven by the seen. Till that becomes unseen and receives proof in its turn. Showing the best and dividing it from the worst, age vexes age. Knowing the perfect fitness and equanimity of things while they discuss I am silent and go bathe and admire myself. Welcome is every organ and attribute of me and of any man hearty and clean, not an inch nor a particle of an inch is vile and none shall be less familiar than the rest. I am satisfied, I see, dance, laugh, sing. Trippers and askers surround me, people I meet and the effect upon me of my early life, of the ward and city I live in, of the nation, the latest news, discoveries, inventions, societies, authors old and new, my dinner, dress, associates, looks, business, compliments, dues, the real or fancied indifferences of some man or woman I love, the sickness of one of my folks or of myself or ill-doing or la loss or lack of money or depression or exaltations. They come to me days and nights and go from me again, but they are not the me myself. Apart from the pulling and hauling stands what I am, stands amused, complacent, compassioning, idle, unitary, locks down, is erect, bends an arm on an impalpable certain rest, looks with its side-curved head, curious what will come next, both in and out of the game, and watching and wondering at it. Backward I see in my own days where I sweated through fog and linguists and contenders. I have no mockings or arguments. I witness and wait. I believe in you, my soul. The other I am must not abase itself to you. And you must not be abased to the other. Loaf with me on the grass. Lose the stop from your throat. Not words nor music nor rhyme I want nor custom or lecture, not even the best. Only the lull I like, the hum of your valved voice. I mind how we lay in June, such a transparent summer morning. You settle your head athwart my hips and gently turned over upon me, and parted your shirt from my breastbone and plunged your tongue to my bare-stripped heart, and reached till you felt my beard and reached until you felt my feet. Swiftly arose and spread around me the peace and joy and knowledge that pass all the art and argument of the earth. And I know that the hand of God is the elder hand of my own. And I know that the spirit of God is the eldest brother of my own. And that all the men ever born are also my brothers and the women my sisters and that a Kelson of the creation is love and limitless are leaves stiff or drooping in the fields, and brown ants in the little wells beneath them, and heap stones, and elder and mullen and pokeweed. A child said, What is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands, how could I answer the child? I do not know what is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition, out of hopeful green stuff woven, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name somehow in the corners, that we may see and remark and say whose. Or I guess the grass itself is a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic, and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white. I give them the same, I receive the same. And now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly will I use your curling grass, 
Yet maybe you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people and from women and from offspring taken soon out of their mother's laps. And here you are the mother's laps. This grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths, Oh, I perceive after all so many uttering tongues, and I perceive they do not come from the roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, and the hints about the old men and mothers and offspring taken soon out of their laps. What do you think has become of the young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there is really no death, and if ever there was, it led forward life, and does not wait at the end to arrest it. And ceased the moment life appeared. All goes onward and outward, and nothing collapses, and to die is different from what anyone supposed, and luckier. Has anyone supposed it to be lucky to be born? I hasten to inform him or her that it is just as lucky to die, and I know it. I pass death with the dying and birth with the new-washed babe, and am not contained between my hat and boots, and peruse manifold objects no two alike, and every one good, the earth good, the stars good, adjuncts all good. I am not an earth nor an adjunct of the earth. I am the mate and companion of people, all just as immortal and fathomless as myself. They do not know how immortal, but I know. Every kind for itself and its own, for me, mine, male and female, for me, all that have been boys and that love women, for me, the man that is proud and feels how it stings to be slighted, for me, the sweetheart and the old maid. For me, mothers and the mothers of mothers. For me, lips that have smiled, eyes that have shed tears. For me, children and the begetters of children. Who need be afraid of the merge. Undraped, you are not guilty to me, nor stale nor discarded. I see through the broadcloth and gingham, whether or no. And am around, tenacious, acquisitive, tireless, and can never be shaken away. This is the meal pleasantly set. This is the meal and drink for natural hunger. It is for the wicked just the same as the righteous. I make appointments with all. I will not have a single person slighted or left away. The kept woman and sponger and thief are hereby invited. There shall be no difference between them and the rest. This is the press of a bashful hand. This is the float and odor of hair. This is the touch of my lips to yours and the murmur of yearning. This is the far-off depth and height reflecting my own face. This is the thoughtful merge of myself and the outlet again. Do you guess I have some intricate purpose? Well, I have. For the April rain has, and the mica on the side of a rock has. Does the daylight astonish, or the early red start twittering through the woods? Do I astonish more than they? This hour I tell things in confidence. I may not tell everyone, but I will tell you. Who goes there, hankering, gross, mystical, nude? How is it I extract strength from the beef I eat? What is a man anyhow? What am I and what are you? All I mark as my own, you shall offset it with your own. Else it were time lost listening to me. I do not snivel that snivel the world over, that months are vacuums and the ground but wallow in filth, that life is a suck and a cell and nothing remains at the end but threadbare crepe and tears. Whimpering and truckling fold with powders for invalids, 
Conformity goes to the fourth removed. I cock my hat as I please indoors or out. Shall I pray? Shall I venerate and be ceremonious? I have pried through the strata and analyzed to a hair and counseled with doctors and calculated close and found no sweeter fat than sticks to my own bones. In all people I see myself, none more, and not one a barley corn less, and the good or bad I say of myself, I say of them, and I know I am solid and sound. To me the converging objects of the universe perpetually flow. All are written to me, and I must get what the writing means, and I know I am deathless. I know this orbit of mine cannot be swept by a carpenter's compass. I know I am august. I do not trouble my spirit to vindicate itself or be understood. I see that the elementary laws never apologize. I reckon I behave no prouder than the level I plant my house by after all. I exist as I am. That is enough. If no other in the world be aware, I sit content. And if each and all be aware, I sit content. One world is aware, and by far the largest to me, and that is myself. And whether I come to my own today, or in ten thousand or ten million years, I can cheerfully take it now, or with equal cheerfulness I can wait. My foothold is tenoned and mortised in granite. I laugh at what you call dissolution, and I know the amplitude of time. I am the poet of the body, and I am the poet of the soul. The pleasures of heaven are with me, and the pains of hell are with me. The first I graph and increase upon myself, the latter I translate into a new tongue. I am the poet of the woman as well as the man, and I say it is great to be a woman as to be a man. And I say there is nothing greater than to be the mother of men. I chant a new chant of delation or pride. We have had ducking and deprecating about enough. I believe in the flesh and the appetites. Seeing, hearing, and feeling are miracles. And each part and tag of me is a miracle. Divine am I inside and out. And I make holy whatever I touch or am touched from. The scent of these armpits is aroma finer than prayer. This head is more than churches or Bibles or creeds. If I worship any particular thing, it shall be some of the spread of my body. Translucent mold of me, it shall be you. Shaded ledges and rests, firm masculine coulter, it shall be you. Whatever grows to the tilth of me, it shall be you. You, my rich blood, your milky stream, pale strippings of my life, breast that presses against other breasts shall be you. My brain shall be your occult convulsions, root of washed sweet flag, timorous pond snipple, nest of guarded duplicate eggs, it shall be you. Mixed tussle hay of head and beard and brawn, it shall be you. Trickling sap of maple, fiber of manly wheat, it shall be you. Sun so generous, it shall be you. Vapors lightly and shading my face, it shall be you. You sweaty brooks and dews, it shall be you. Broad muscular fields, branches of live oak, loving lounger in my winding paths, it shall be you. Hands I have never taken, face I have kissed, mortal I have ever touched, it shall be you. I dote on myself, there is that lot of me, and all so luscious, each moment and whatever happens trills me with joy. I cannot tell how my ankles bend, nor whence the cause of my faintest wish, nor the cause of the friendship I emit, nor the cause of the friendship I take again. To walk to my stoop is unaccountable. I pause to consider if it really be. That I eat and drink is spectacle enough for the great authors and schools. The morning glory at my window satisfies me more than the metaphysics of books. To behold the daybreak, the little light fades the immense 
and diaphanous shadows. The air tastes good to my palate. Hefts of the moving world at innocent gambles. Silently rising, freshly exalting, scooting obliquely high and low. The earth by the sky stayed with the daily close of their junction. The heaved challenge from the east that moment over my head. The mocking taunt. See then whether you shall be master. Dazzling and tremendous, how quick the sunrise would kill me if I could not now and always send sunrise out of me. We also ascend dazzling and tremendous as the sun. We found our own soul in the calm and cool of the daybreak. My voice goes after what my eyes cannot reach. With the twirl of my tongue, I encompass worlds and volumes of worlds. Speech is the twin of my vision. It is unequal to measure itself. It provokes me forever. It says sarcastically, Walt, you understand enough. Why don't you let it out then? Come now, I will not be tantalized. You conceive too much of articulation. Do you not know how the buds underneath are folded, waiting in gloom, protected by frost, the dirt receding before my prophetical screams? I underline causes to balance them at last, my knowledge, my life parts, it keeping tally with the meaning of things, happiness, which whoever hears me, let him or her set out in search of this day. My final merit, I refuse you. I refuse putting from me the best I am. Encompass worlds, but never try to encompass me. I crowd your noisiest talk by looking toward you. Writing and talk do not prove me. I carry the plentum of proof and everything else in my face. With the hush of my lips, I confound the utmost skeptic. I think I will do nothing for a long time but listen and accrue what I hear into myself and let words contribute toward me. I hear the bravaras of birds, the bustle of growing wheat, gossip of flames, clack of sticks cooking my meals. I hear the sound of the human voice, a sound I love. I hear all sounds as they are tuned to their uses, sounds of the city and sounds of the day and night, talkative young ones to those that like them. Mine is no callous shell. I have instant conductors all over me, whether I pass or stop. They seize every object and lead it harmlessly through me. I merely stir, press, feel with my fingers, and am happy. To touch my person to someone else's is about as much as I can stand. Is this then a touch, quivering me to new identity, flames and ether making a rush for my veins, treacherous tip of me reaching and crowding to help them, my flesh and blood playing out lightning to strike what is hardly different from myself? On all sides, provokers stiffening my limbs, straining the udder of my heart for its withheld drip. I am he bringing help for the sick as they pant on their backs, and for the strong, upright men I bring yet more needed help. I heard what was said of the universe, heard it and heard for several thousand years. It is middling well as far as it goes, but is that all? Magnifying and applying come I. What is known I strip away. I launch all men and women forward with me into the unknown. The clock indicates the moment. But what does eternity indicate? Eternity lies in bottomless reservoirs, and buckets are rising forever and ever. They pour and they pour and they exhale away. We have thus far exhausted trillions of winters and summers, there are trillions ahead and trillions ahead of them. Births have brought us richness and variety, and other births will bring us richness and variety. I do not call one greater and one smaller. That which fills its period and place is equal to any. Were mankind murderous or jealous upon you, my brother or my sister, I am sorry for you. They are not murderous or jealous upon me. All has been gentle with me. 
I keep no account with lamentation. What have I to do with lamentation? I am an acme of things accomplished. I am an encloser of things to be. Rise after rise, bow the phantoms behind me. Afar down I see the huge first nothing, the vapor from the nostrils of death. I know I was even there. I waited unseen and always, and slept while God carried me through the lethargic mist, and took my time, and took no hurt from the fetid carbon. Long I was hugged close, long and long. Immense have been the preparations for me, faithful and friendly the arms that have helped me. Cycles ferried my cradle, rowing and rowing like cheerful boatmen. For room to me, stars kept inside in their own rings. They sent influences to look after what was to hold me. Before I was born out of my mother, generations guided me. My embryo has never been torpid. Nothing could overlay it. For it, the nebula cohered to an orb. The long, slow strata piled to rest on it. Vast vegetables gave it sustenance. Monstrous sauroids transport it in their mouths and deposit it with care. All forces have been steadily employed to complete and delight me. Now I stand on this spot with my soul. I have said that the soul is not more than the body, and I have said that the body is not more than the soul, and nothing not God is greater to one than oneself is, and whoever walks a furlong without sympathy walks in his own funeral, dressed in his shroud. And I, or you, pocketless of a dime, may purchase the pick of the earth, and to glance with an eye or show a bean in its pod confounds the learning of all times. And there is no trade or employment but the young man following. It may become a hero. And there is no object so soft, but it makes a hub for the wheeled universe. And any man or woman shall stand cool before a million universes. And I call to mankind, Be not curious about God, for I who am curious about each am not curious about God. No array of terms can I say how much I am at peace about God and about death. I hear and behold God in every object, yet I understand God not in the least, nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? I see something of God each hour of the twenty-four and each moment then. In the faces of men and women I see God, and in my own face, in the glass. I find letters from God dropped in the streets, and every one is signed by God's name. And I leave them where they are, for I know that others will punctually come forever and ever. And as to you, death, and you bitter hug of mortality, it is idle to try to alarm me. And as to you, life, I reckon you are the leavings of many deaths. No doubt I have died myself ten thousand times before. I hear you whispering there, O stars of heaven, O suns, O grass of graves, O perpetual transfers and promotions. If, do you not, if you do not say anything, how can I say anything? Of the turbid pool that lies in the autumn forest, of the moon that descends the steps, the steeps, of the sowing twilight. Toss sparkles of day and dusk. Toss on the black stems that decay in the muck. Toss to the moaning gibberish of the dry limbs. I ascend from the moon. I ascend from the night. And I perceive from the ghastly glitter the sunbeams reflected. The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I too am not a bit tamed. I too am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yap over the roofs of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest, and true as any on the shadowed wilds, it coaxes me to the vapor and the dusk. I depart as air. 
I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I effuse my flesh in eddies and drift it in lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you, nevertheless, and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me, me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere, waiting for you. Bless you, bless you. Open the window now. You did so well. You did so well. Bless you. 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 